It was a stormy night. You know the kind where the lightning strike. And I was hanging out with some of my artsy friends. Ooh, 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 the night was long. The night went on. People cooling out till the break of dawn. Incense was burning, so I'm feeling right. I, you see, I picked my friends like I picked my fruit. And Gannon told me that when I was only a youth, I don't walk around trying to be with them now. I don't waste my time trying to get what you got. I work and please me because I can't please you. And that's why I do what I do. My soul flies free like a willow tree. Do we, do we, do we? And if you don't want to be down with me, then you don't want to be from my apple tree. And if you don't want to be down with me, then you don't want to be from my apple tree. And if you don't want to be down with me, then you don't want to pick from my apple tree. And if you don't want to be down with me, you just don't want to be down. I have a hole, and I take it everywhere I go. Cause I'm patting seeds, so I reap what I sow. You know, who on and on and on and on. My cipher keeps moving like a rolling stone. I can't control the soul flowing through me. You see, I picked my friends like I picked my fruit. And Gannon told me that when I was only a youth, I don't walk around trying to be with them now. I don't waste my time trying to get what you got. I work and pleasing me because I can't please you. And that's why I do what I do. My soul flies free like a willow tree. Do we, do we, do we? And if you don't want to be down with me, then you don't want to pay for my apple tree. And if you don't want to be down with me, you dumb, dumb diddy. And if you don't want to be down with me, then you don't want to pay for my apple tree. And if you don't want to be down with me, you just don't want to be down, 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 ooh, down, 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 ooh, down, be down, 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 down. But a goodie. Welcome everybody. It is Sunday. Here we are live. Miss Stephanie's house live. I kind of wish this was my house. So uh, it's been a while since we've seen everybody. Uh, a lot has happened since I've seen you all. Um, I went to Puerto Rico. It was amazing. Did a lot of cool things. Um, one of the things that stood out was kayaking in the Bio Bay. I encourage everyone, look it up, send your money, save it. It's so cool. It's a bioluminescent bay and you go at night. It's a night kayaking trip and it's probably the coolest thing. You put your hands in the water and the bioforest, actually, Mr. Scientist back there, am I saying it wrong? Bioluminescent. Bioluminescent, thank you. Um, it's the most super cool thing I think that I've ever done in my life. Um, another awesome thing that happened this month, um, this month is a double header for me. Um, I'm an aunt, again, um, and I have another one my, my, my niece, my second niece was due this past week on Wednesday morning, and my next one is due next week. And why am I so excited about this? Well, of course I love being an aunt, but the best part, the best part about this is that now it takes all the attention off of me from being single and not having any kids. So I don't have to listen to my grandma and my mom for the next couple of months at least, right? Because they have two new babies to keep them, like that should tide them over for a while, right? A while, a while. So I can start, I can keep being like the irresponsible, fun party girl that I want to be. Um, so anyway, I say mazel tov to my sister. I know you're going to be a great mom. I can't wait to come down and see my new niece. Um, and so that is the big thing. Also, we've got March Madness. Has it started yet? No. It's starting. That's that? coming up. March what Madness. That? That's when everyone goes mad. Just kidding. We live in New York City. Everybody's already mad here. What am I saying? Um, and also, the biggest thing that we can all enjoy, spring is just around the corner. It has been, like, what, like the longest winter ever, right? <laughs> um, but anyway, we have a really fabulous show. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, hello, France, Finland, other UK and other areas that we know you're out there. Um, we have a great show. We have Jeff Peering and Peering Sound here, um, Margarita Carole, and Vanya Arslanian. Is that, did I say that correctly? Awesome. Thank you. 
You know why? Because I passed English. <laughs> very well, very high marks there. Um, let me just give you a little intro here. So Jeff, I am very pleased to welcome Jeff Peering and his trio that is inspired by the urban landscape that is here among us. A trio that examines the outer edges of sound while maintaining a deep center of American blues, jazz, and funk. So, please put your hands together for Peering Sound. Uh, thank you, Ms. Stephanie, and thank you for having us. Hey, everybody. Have a good Sunday. Thank you. 
performance artist. She helps run the monthly open mic at the Creek and Cave in LIC for moms, dads, nannies, mannies, and anyone else that has ever been around a child. This is uh, this funny mommy is here today to share some songs with us, so please put your hands together for Vanya Arslan. Hi. Thank you, Miss Stephanie, for having me. And I just want to tell you, once you get married, once you have kids, there'll still be something, just so you know. Um, <laughs> so this is an exciting day for me because I got a babysitter. <laughs> I have an 18 month old. I have a one and a half year old. She's fantastic, she's crazy, she's a little scary. I adore her. She's, a, she's totally awesome. Um, fun fact, she, um, she really likes to hump things. So I was like, um, it makes me, I'm like, is this okay? So I asked the doctor, I'm like, is it okay, her incessant humping, is she gonna, is she normal? And the doctor was like, oh, but wouldn't you if you could? And she's French, she's right. <laughs> I mean, I would if I could. And you know, I actually did. As a child, I was obsessed with my vagina. I totally <laughs> loved to hump things and I did it. My parents tried to ignore it until I started to make family outings really awkward. <laughs> And I think I was about four when they, whether they meant to or not, God, I love you guys, but kind of shamed me from ever, like, loving myself. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so 
So I didn't actually do that again until I was 20 years old. God damn, I know it's the saddest thing. So that was years and years of like self-discovery and self-acceptance like just stolen from me. And I don't want that to happen to my daughter. I want her to love herself. I want her to know herself better than she ever knows a dude. Or if we are so lucky, a lady. Anyways. <laughs> My doctor said, you have nothing to worry about. But you see, I do, I worry. Because I want to encourage her to love herself. Maybe when she is like of appropriate age, like 13, 14, 15, 16, I don't know, one of those appropriate ages, I'll let her like pick out a dildo or, and get like a Blu-ray of porn. Or maybe, I don't know, at that point, maybe it'll be like a hologram of porn but porn with pubic hair because it just feels more responsible. <laughs> I don't know. My parents said, you know, it's not nice, but <laughs> it's so nice, hello. Um, or you know what I could do, because I'm totally gonna have this phone in 2029 because that was super expensive. <laughs> I'm just gonna have this at the ready. I love you so much, I want you to love you When you lay down, no one has to be above you So search yourself, I want you to find you Don't forget yourself, don't need no one to remind you You don't need anybody else When you are in private, you can touch yourself Oh, you don't need Anybody else? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Because, honey, you're the one who makes you happy, honey. You got the sun that makes you shine. When you're alone, you're happy as can be, babe. You can be your own Valentine. And then I'll be like, and maybe do a little mom dance, you know. She's gonna be like, Mom, oh, stop. We're in Costco, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> Jeez, could you just wait until we got to the car? I, apparently my daughter sounds like Keona Reeves, I don't know, anyways. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to love herself. That's it, thanks guys. Can I just mention that it's your grandma's birthday oh, and yeah. she's watching, so we wanna say happy birthday to you. Yeah. 30, you're probably 39, like my grandma. No, my grandma actually turned, I'm afraid to say this, because I might get cut out of the will. She turned 90 this month, like just like last week. But she really does insist, like when we go out in public, she's like, I'm 39, which is kind of awkward, because we're now the same age. <laughs> <laughs> Who looks better? No, um, actually, I think I told this story before, but I went down to see her over Thanksgiving, and we were getting ready to go out to another cousin's house for dinner, and she walked out, and I was like, Grandma, like, we have the same coat. I wasn't wearing it. I didn't wear it. I didn't take it down to see her. But I was like, I'm not really sure what this says about my fashion sense. But uh, I guess that just says that she's pretty stylish. So we all got to get it from somewhere, right? Anyway, we have our next performer. Um, she is the founder of Urban Pop Art Projects and was named the best new visual artist of 2013 by the Chicago Reader. Her collaborations have crossed through the mediums of design, music, publishing, nonprofits, and local hustlers. Is that yeah. us? That's us, I guess, because today, here you are, and here we are. Um, she is here to read some excerpts from her award-winning book, Spoils of War. It's an ode to Rifunik, um, from her mother emigrating here from Soviet Union. Um, so, we, oh, I forgot to mention this before I did her intro, is that we have a new segment. It's called Person of Interest. So we just decided, because we know tons of interesting people, such as you all sitting out there, that we would like to start incorporating that in our show. So our person of interest that is going to read from her award-winning book and do a poem from us is Miss Margarita Corral. Damn, there's some talented motherfuckers in the house. Hello, Brooklyn. Hello. I'm inviting Jeff Pairing Sound upstage because I like to multitask. So yeah, I guess 
I'm trying to figure out how I'm different from everyone else and being a person of interest. I guess I'm usually behind the scenes. But like Kanye, I like to sacrifice social graces for my art every so often. <laughs> Vanya, you inspired me to read a poem I vowed not to read in public. <laughs> I feel like this is a hater-free zone. I don't know about the internet, but you know. I'm cool with that. Okay, it's a short one. Okay. Oh, back then, when I first moved to New York, I let a dude eat me out on the boardwalk at four in the morning as folks woke up or went to sleep or rode by on bikes cheering us on. I smoked menthols and had threesomes on Craigslist and reminisced with strangers. I was a happy little hoe. Didn't know why I should say no. It was my body and I did what I want back then when I was a thought. That's that. (laughs) I'd like to disobey myself regularly. So I have a couple of short ditties just to get you in the mood. Here's one. Um, Art and a fart are pretty much the same things. Come with me on this one. I'll explain why. They come from deep in you and marinate in everything you've recently consumed from the outside world. (laughs) And by the time you're asking what all this stinks about, they've already become one with your surroundings. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right, if you got him, lift him up. By the way, hello to Chicago. Chicago. This is where I'm from. Yeah, I'm PA. If you got him, pop him. Okay. So this is a this is a toast I learned from my friend Zach George. He's an author and farmer in New Orleans. Ready? Here's to friendships. Well, oh fuck, I drank too much and I said the punchline. Okay, here's. <laughs> Here's to wood ships, here's to good ships, here's to ships that sail the sea. But the best ships are friendships. <laughs> May they forever be. I am drinking a margarita. Okay, another one, okay? Here's to honor. Here's to stay in honor, keep in honor, and if you can't come in or come on her. Hey! Stephanie said, thank you for introducing me. Um, Yeah, I published this book in 2010. It's actually like a poem that was published on a website, (laughs) tablamag.com. And um, there was a coinciding like um, poster exhibit that was featured at the National Arts Club. And there I performed this. And later on, it became really multimedia where um, I had some musician in LA and the New York Magazine's um, video editor put together like a karaoke video for it. And um, it explains my mother's story of bringing me here. I was born the week of Chernobyl in Ukraine. And um, I'm really grateful that I'm not like a hooker in Russia right now. (laughs) Fuck Putin. I'm here and I'm an artist and yeah. So um, in 2007, I went to Prague um, I had been living in Chicago and like kind of hating on my whole immigrant identity. Like I'm American now, and every time I ask my family where you know what happened, where did we come from, they'd say America is best country. <laughs> Why do you need to know? So I finally got a chance to explore for myself, you know. And in like a post-Soviet landscape like Prague, you see a lot of like salty old people who are not happy with capitalism. You know, they can't afford everything that's being marketed to them anymore so um, I did some heavy thinking there you know when you leave your normal space you kind of realize what is normal for you can be questionable and so I wrote some really profound things back then I don't know if I ever got back to that I think that might have been my peak when I was 19 I hope not I hope I'm not peaking like those high school girls who are now like in the suburbs pregnant okay so this will just warm you up for the poem that I'm going to have these guys back me up on later. Okay, so Kundera's concept of fortuities certainly is a romantic one. The concept that everything is sexier by chance rather than by plan. And that if things end up your way in the end, it is interesting to measure the innor- innumerable fortuities that had led up to such an outcome. After visiting the Tibetan Buddhist Karmapa in Prague, I also learned their worldview, which applies cause and effect theory in that we are connected to everything in the universe, so there are no accidents. To mingle Kundera and Karmapa then, 
These seemingly chance occurrences are actually effects and causes of greater scale. Thus, if happiness for oneself is the effect, then you should feel so fortunate that your happiness is the result of the harmonies of the greater order of the universe. Mm -hmm. So I can't be so mad at Stalin because I, you know, ended up here in Miss Stephanie's house. Mm -hmm. So um, I've, I've um, shortened this a bit for this stage. I'll give you, a, you know, something. This is for my mother and my brother and sister who were born here so that they can see that they're more than the Ugg boots they're wearing. All right. So this is my mother, by the way. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you isn't enough to say to a woman who risked her life for you, but it's a start. Woods. <laughs> To see through to the other side requires one to blur the rigid obstacles to foresee a path despite the brush. She went by way of Vienna, a route that promised better something, anything better than this, this waste of potential energy within the individual these roots are festering. She went alone because the others could not would not break from the system, from the safety that they knew. And she took me, small, helpless burden, sleeping on a train, onwards to Italy, where she waited for more steps toward the outside, life she did not know, but that was hers now that the outsiders stepped in. Eight years in wait in debased lifestyle, unspeakable, stories still in pits buried in the woods. Do not dig them up, for it is pure radi radioactive pain. Years in wait, her first daughter meets a boy. They marry. No, we are leaving, no new roots, said my grandmother. They say to her, but like them, she does not listen pulls branches toward individual happiness. A dream. What is life of babushka and dedushka let to go instantly? Life in Israel? No, not where they belong. Opportunities and opportunists head west. That's where the hustlers go. With two young daughters and two old parents and others schlepped to Chicago oldest daughter meets American man, no babies yet, so better picks, handsome man, kind man, without soiled fingernails, nice clean slate, nice bright future, ideal that is illusion. Choices are made, I am born in thick of weight. Thank you, Father Brezhnev, I owe my existence to your regime. Same week. Nuclear meltdown. National secret. The countrymen must not worry, must not lose faith in the motherland. Mayday parade and skeletons dance proving patriotic loyalty. More waiting yet to leave the dump. They did not tell you who you are. Roots buried with the racing dirt. My brothers and sisters, swept under the table is this dirt. You read and debate criticism of big new country. Down with these imperialists. Yes, good. Opinions grow, but roots unfound still. My sweet babies, we sit at the victory table with spoils of war. Don't you know? Look at the feast and all they now can give you. And bend down, look under the table. What is there? So dirty, but put clean hands in and feel life turn chalk dead. Clean hands hold power. Bring these fighters at the table honey, sweet potential energy. From hives of progress in American schools and on American streets and in American offices, bring it back to them and know who is eating it. They are your warriors, 
They fought and got all of this for you. Now, eat and drink. Yeah. Um, so my first question for you, Margarita. So you're a multidiscipline artist, like you publishing, music, all kinds of stuff. So I guess my first question for you is, what was the first medium that you experimented in? Um, probably masturbating as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I went to an art school in Skokie where, you know, they did the formal trajectory of charcoal through sure. cray pads, and then I think I skipped watercolor because I didn't like that thinning. I like to layer, so I went on to oils right away. Um, but now I do a lot of digital stuff, which is more like, um, you know, Photoshop has inherently layers, so I mon monopolize on those. Okay. <laughs> do you have... Um I guess should we pass that? Thanks. One? So many mics. Oh, cool. Thanks. Thank God you're here, Jeff. <laughs> um, so, what do you have like a favorite medium? Now, okay. So I used to um, work in a magazine where I was a sex colonist, but also an art director. And oh, right. there, I had to turn out like illustrations in 20 minutes. So I really warmed up to just Photoshop collage like illustrations. And I do nice. a lot of portraits on there too. Cool. Yeah. Wait, I'm just confused. I didn't know masturbation was an art. Can I add that to my resume? <laughs> yes. Everything is art. Art Everything is life. Is art. art is God. Trust art is art. God. I know. That's yeah. true. So, Vanya, you're um, a musician, comedian. So, what first made you, like, when did you first, like, realize, I want to play music? Well, I was sort of a, um, a secret sort of music I'm, I'm not really a closet a musician. musician yeah I'm a closet musician Shower I'm, I'm musician. actually I feel like I'm still in the closet <laughs> I, I really um, I'm mostly like I've mostly done performance art and acting but I think that I have this um, thought that everyone in the world wants to be secretly a rock star I kind of believe whether that. or not they're talented or yeah. not and I'm sorry everyone but you know what I mean like whether or not you can yeah. like bolt it you just do it and totally. I just honestly after having that kid I have no fear. I, I just don't great. give a shit anymore. I'm like, fuck it, you're gonna have to hear me. That's what's happening, sorry. <laughs> I love it, fearless, yeah. but that's, I mean, being a performer, I feel like that's kind of a necessity. Definitely, I feel awesome. freer. Awesome, so Jeff, when did you first discover, um, was the sax your first instrument? Uh, it was my second instrument. I actually played trumpet first. Oh. Okay, actually I have a weird question and I am not a wind instrument person. Okay. But we've had trumpet players on the show previously. Sure. And you know, they're playing do 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 and then they like release that valve and all the spit comes out. <laughs> Does that not happen on a sax? Because I haven't seen any of your spit on the ground. <laughs> I know that's a really dumb question, but I noticing I didn't notice if it was. Is there a valve on there for that? No, um, I don't think any horn player really spits in their horn. Well, no, no, you know but what I'm. But there's water vapor that, that or, happens, okay, you well, know, because you're breathing hot air into it, and right? You know, well, condensation sure and all mixed. that. Um, yeah, no, it, it does happen. And if I flip the bell upside down after playing for like you know 20 minutes, half hour, there'll be uh, there'll be some water. That water. Comes okay. Out no, I shouldn't have said spit. I know <laughs> condensation, hot air. Is that better? Okay. Yeah, definitely. Cool. <laughs> hot air, hot air gets blown through horns all the time. <laughs> there you go. There's a lot of hot air anyway around here, <clears throat> right here maybe. Um, so, what um, made you, like, what made you, what was drew you to the saxophone? Uh, well, I only played the trumpet uh, until I was about eight years old, mm -hmm. uh, and then my uh, my trumpet teacher died, <gasps> and um, I wanted to play drums. And I went to the music store with my, uh, with my dad and asked the guy I want to take drum lessons and he broke out a little bell kit, you know, like the little xylophone things, like this is how we start drummers. I took one look at that and I said, that's, I'm not going to play that. <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I, had, I had too many uh, hang-ups about playing a bell kit. So then my dad recommended that I play the uh, saxophone and of course they try and start me on the clarinet first. Oh, right, yeah. But I was lucky, the guy who teaches clarinets and saxophones was in this spot. Uh, my first teacher, Mr. Bud Reed, and he took a look at my hands, and I was a very skinny child. And he said, your fingers are really skinny. He's like, we'll start you on the saxophone, because the clarinet has those holes you have to cover. Right, right. So he started me on the saxophone, which is really what I wanted to play, uh, fourth grade, and that's about it. And here you are. Yeah. Nice. So these are 
are a little bit more structured. So I'm going to let you guys, we're going to do three questions. And since there are three of you, we'll let you each pick a number. So would you like to start, Jeff? You can pick a number. It is 1 through, I believe it is 18. Yes, 1 through 18. OK, well, I do have the microphone, so I'll start. Uh, <laughs> I'll stick with uh, 7. Lucky number 7. Did help ever come to you in a surprising way? Did help ever come to Help only comes to me in a surprising way. Uh, you can't, I mean, that's the thing about help, though, right? If you're looking for it, you're never going to find it. It's like cabs on rainy days and all those other like things. Like a man. I'm just kidding. Wow. Oh. I run into men everywhere I go, so I'm not really worried about that. But, uh, but yeah, no, help always comes in surprising ways. It's, it's generally when you feel like there's nothing else that can happen um, and you've given up looking for help, that that's when someone or something comes along to, to kind of guide you in that way and, and really kind of push you, in my experience. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes you have to wait for it a lot longer than you think you should. Sure. But uh, I've, I've been very blessed. Help has always come my way. So I That's can't, a good thing. can't complain about it. Nice. Fania? Do you want me to re if you need me to repeat the question? I, I can. Okay. I'll, I'll pick nine. I feel like nine's a good number. Yeah. Wait, same question, right? Well, we're answering the same question. Oh, we're all asking. But you oh, can pick I'm nine so next sorry. time. Okay. Here we go. So, uh, Did yeah, help ever you. come to you in a surprising way? Hmm. That is. Well, I think that uh, oftentimes I, I, I kind of have, I get frustrated when I'm, and I, when I get nervous and I get really frustrated and I'm searching, I'm searching, I'm researching, I'm calling people and uh, honestly, most of the time my husband is like, hey, what if you try, try this? And it can be with, with, honestly, with performance, it can be with most things, but I'm like, he watches me just in a tizzy and doesn't like, just lets me go, lets me be cry cry. And then I'm like, no! <laughs> And then I'm like, wait, yeah. Let me try it that way. And it's great, you know, anyways. Nice. Well, yeah. we can all use input from time to time, obviously. Definitely. That's nice. That's one reason I have a husband. Yeah, you're right. That is a good reason. I'm trying to convince myself because, like, my, like, <laughs> prime thing about marriage is that it's the first step towards divorce. And I'm trying to, like, convince myself that that's, that can be overpowered. Like, I don't cook either because I just think about dirty dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's worse because my whole purpose for getting married is just to go through a registry. <laughs> exactly. My I'm brother's like, I really it, yeah. want that mixer. Right, Should so I get you married? Here. You go, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, as an artist, I think it's, and I think everyone's an artist, uh, potentially. And I think it's important to be open to, you know, the opportunities of the universe and Absolutely. open to whatever the fuck can be thrown your way and say yes before you say no. And that's how help finds you. And like, if you have to go do some drugs in the woods to open yourself up, then please do, do for the sake of everyone else around you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yeah, you have to open up. And I really think that the world would be a better place if we all did just. Yeah, you help. actually said something. Um, I know someone who, I mean, I, I kind of had experience with people where you say, hey, do you want to go do this? And the first answer is always no. And like, you didn't even say like, really what it was and you have to argue them to say yes and that is a really draining thing and I, I when this situation happened I said you know you should try being a yes person more often and see what comes your way yeah what's the worst that can what's happen what's the worst that can happen usually like no is what you'll hear exactly mm. if you say I love you to someone and they say no okay well you move on all right you move on. on exactly I'm still single I'll mm -hmm. go masturbate <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you want to pick the next one? Did you want to go with nine, or did you want to go with nine? All right, agree, right? Okay. Are you guys okay with I that? Like that? It's a hard one. No. What is your most persistent distraction, and how do you keep it in check? It's a two-part question. Uh, I can repeat any part of that. I want to make a terrible joke about a cage, but um, my daughter is definitely <laughs> my biggest distraction. I love her so much, <laughs> and um, before that, it might have been, you know boozing it up and enjoying the nightlife in New York City, but definitely my daughter. And the way I keep it in check is I literally, I just have to time, like make a schedule. I, and, and I have to be okay and not feel guilty about taking her to a babysitter because I'm a, I'm a bartender by trade, so I'm with her like 
all the time. Not We're for together. her and her friends, I take it. Yeah, no, not <laughs> yeah for her and the other eighteen month olds. <laughs> nice. Uh, they sound fun. Some of the moms I am, but <laughs> yeah, no, it, yeah, it's just like it's sort of prioritizing and um, and I'm actually very excited because I I was kind of like you know I do want a family, uh, so I'm gonna do that, and it might mean risking my creative life. But in fact, it really has only pushed me to be a little more um, productive, honestly. And I, I'm not trying to be like, eh, I'm productive. But like, it has because I ha- if I want to do it, I have to fight for it. I can't just be like, I'm sure. going to watch like every episode of House of Cards, which is what I really want to do. Right. Right, Adam? We're on like episode two. and I, uh, Anyways. But instead, I have to be like, I'm doing this and then this and then you're watching her, right? You got to be home at seven. So, yeah. Definitely. Where am I going? Uh, you next? can go that way. You keep it going. Never break the chain here. Um, I can repeat the question for you. Oh, thanks. What is your most persistent distraction, and how do you keep it in check? I'm like trying to think of something to replace my real answer, which is just Pat. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't. That's think a distraction. Of and I mean, we exactly. can argue that for exactly. days, but it's part of the process. And you know, the second answer would be grad school is just in the way of making the art. But you know, these are my new priorities, and <laughs> you just accept what your process is, and you do things in a timely manner. And fit it in. I agree. It's about time management, but you don't deny yourself. I no, mean, it's like that burger that. Yeah, you it's like being on a diet. Sometimes to eat. you just, just gotta, gotta eat it right. and move on. That's it. Actually, <laughs> um, my one of my mentors, I remember a long time ago, he said to me, "You gotta look at your day in terms of it being like a pie." Exactly. And you cut out like you know a piece, and like this amount of hours goes to working out. This amount of hours goes to you know whatever making money. Because we all need that in this city that we know. Um, they never let you forget that here. So Definitely. And you have to like cut out the slice that is made of bullshit so right. that you have more room for the I gave bullshit. up showering. You guys can't, exactly. you can't tell up here, can you? No. <laughs> yeah. And I think that like the pie has become part of my meditation, which I think everyone needs to work into their day some way. Absolutely. That your problems are no longer part of you. They're something separate. Like, they're all in this cup. <laughs> drink, drink it, it but, Yeah, you know. just drink it. <laughs> That's how you I get rid of it. What is your most persistent distraction? Um, I think New York City is, is pretty much my most persistent distraction. It's always there. Um, there's always stuff to be doing, um, always places to go. Um, you know, it's, it's what I love about the city, but it's also it's that thing that, you know. You don't want to miss anything. Yeah, there's a lot out there, you know, especially with uh, New York has a lot of underground art and a lot of underground theater and a lot of underground stuff exactly going on right here um and when you start going to those sorts of events you meet people and then you meet other people and you continue to uh you know get attached to all these great artists and then you want to see them perform and then they come see you perform and and uh and so then your whole calendar gets flushed out when you're just thinking about you know where you're going to go and who you're going to see next and then you try and line up your own stuff and it's yeah that can be uh that can be uh, pretty daunting at times, but uh, the way I deal with it is I just have to remind myself that it's always there. New York City is always going to be it's right. going to be there. It's right outside my door. All I have to do is focus on myself, do what I have to do, and New York City will be there when I uh, when, when I open the door re-emerge. and emerge, ready to go see everybody. Exactly. <laughs> do you want to pick? Sure. Uh, um, I'll go with 18 because I feel like when you iterate. Usually your last shit is good. This is a good good one. No, I love it. Any advice for someone who wants to pursue their own creative goals? Just do it. Can I get some sponsorship now? Yeah, I know. Yeah. It takes courage for sure, but, you know, you have to think like Kanye, I think. (laughs) Go Google this thing like Kanye Fidence. I don't remember what magazine did this, but they compiled all the ridiculous shit he says to like rev himself up and like it's you know his haters will be like oh that's too much he's not humble but who's going to be confident in you if it's not you and who is to say that you're not to be in the echelon of the Walt Disney's and like the sure Mark Mothers Bros you know is that I wonder why I said that one (laughs) (laughs) but you know like people you um, look up to you are not separated by them from them. That's just the patriarchy and the motherfucking system. Yeah, telling, telling you. So. Yeah, and the system would be in a lot of trouble if we all believe that. So I hope we True. Is it me or him? I'm confused. It doesn't. Ladies, okay. Ladies first. <laughs> we'll go back the other way. 
I would love for you to repeat that because I forgot. But I like what you said. I was so into what you said. Advice. Yes. I want to take yours, Margarita. (laughs) And uh, the advice I have is is kind of sort of the same in terms of just be a little selfish. Stop listening to what other people say. Yes. You can take a lot of classes and listen to other people. And you can get just confused. And the truth is, is, especially if you're creating your own stuff, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. I'm, you know, it's like, because you can have people give you, everybody's going to have a, of an opinion. Sorry, you know, everybody's going to have an opinion. And I feel like the power is in just being like, no, I think this is right. I think what I think is right. And then maybe, you know, then I'll take some feedback. But like, before you do that, own yourself first. Yeah, own it. I love it. Um... For me, I guess the advice that I'd give is uh, that you just have to be yourself. Uh, you know, that's of course easier said than done. Um, you know, personally, I spend a lot of time asking myself difficult questions about who I am to try and figure out what kind of sound I'm going for, what kind of aesthetic I'm going for. Mm-hmm. Because if you're trying to be somebody else, if, you're tr- if you know, you can be influenced and you can ha- definitely have your favorites or whatnot. But if you're actually trying to be what someone else is creatively or artistically, it's just never going to work out for you. Um, you have to identify what you're, where you're coming from and what, uh, what's, what's most important to you in that. And then once you tap into that, you know, like, like you guys were saying, it, it may not translate for everybody because, you know, nobody likes everybody and, you know. It's, it's, it's just a personal opinion sort of a thing. And in fact, a lot of times, if you're really tapped deep into yourself, then what you're coming up with is totally unique to you. And so it takes people a while to learn who you are. Right. You know, so you have to essentially introduce yourself as an artist to people. Sure. And then, you know, they may like it, they may not. But uh, if you're doing it to be liked, then you're really, you're really not, not doing it. Go <laughs> <any, laughs> you're anywhere. Then I got news for you, man. You <laughs> find something else Long to do. Road. <laughs> There's a lot of things you can do where people like you. Right. Art is not necessarily one of those things. So. Right. We do have one more question. These are questions that I came up with personally. So if one of you guys wants to pick one through 13, anybody can pick that one. Or you can pick different ones. Do you whatever you, you like. Yeah. I would pick 13 because that's a lucky number for me. 13. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you were a spice, what would you be? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> if I was a spice... Should we come back to you? You, want to think <laughs> you know, I, I would have to say that if I was a spice, I would be oregano. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> oregano. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I like oregano. It's good fresh. It's good dried. Um, goes with a lot of other spices. True. Goes with a lot of food palettes. It's found worldwide, you know. All the good things I like about it. I like that, and I like your reason for that. <laughs> you can answer that one, or you can choose a different number, whichever one you want. I like that one. I want to answer right, that one. Let's stick with that. I, you know, I'm just going to go from the first thing that came into my head. Sometimes it's the worst, sometimes it's the best idea, but I'm going to say cayenne, because you know what? Spicy. I'm a little spicy, but I taste so good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree with that. Um, I wanted to say, like, posh spice, but, you know. <laughs> I'll go with like cinnamon. My acupuncturist tells me I'm cold and damp, <laughs> and like cinnamon's supposed to heat you up from within, and like you know you can carry that heat out to everyone else. I don't know. Is it getting hot up here? <laughs> <laughs> Who put the cinnamon on the stage? Just kidding. <laughs> you invited me. I love it. Thank you very much, y'all. Do you guys ever have take cabs here in the city? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> yes. You know, it's funny, I realized something just the other day. I actually took the Bolt bus and uh, took a cab a couple nights ago. And um, I was kind of thinking to myself, I got into these conversations with my drivers. First of all, the Bolt bus, I don't think I'm supposed to be talking to the driver as he's driving. But we managed to talk for about three hours of the three and a half hour trip that we were on. And, um, you know, a lot of the people that you meet, the cab driver as well, I've had like really meaningful conversations with like the drivers. It's bizarre. Does that ever happen to anyone else here? Yeah. Just like randomly, like you sit in a cab and then like all of a sudden you, you could be having like a crazy stressed out day and then they start talking about something and it really just hits a, you know, a chord with you. 
And I realized, I was like, wow, you know, I go through my day, I'm doing so much, like multitasking, you know, doing my day like a pie, putting all this effort into all these things. And then the, the really, the, I get, you know, so like with blinders on that I'm so focused on something that I don't even realize, like, my God, I haven't talked to my mom in a couple of days, I haven't talked to my sister. And then I'm realizing I'm having the most meaningful conversations. Like one of the ones I had recently was with my waxer, <laughs> which was really bizarre. I mean, it was like she knows more about my personal life, I think, than sometimes my best friends. But that's another thing, I think, with um, just being very open. In, in that case, I was very open. But, um, you know, just when you <laughs> really... I'm sorry, I know that was really bad, but um, you know, you start talking to people and you never know how, when or how you're gonna connect with them. You know, you just start having these conversations so you can, um, oh my God, I'm a little nervous about this. Um, you know, you can just connect with people you never know. It's like nice to be, I'm a very open person, so it, it's kind of worked out. I've met really amazing people along my journey. So, Vanya, are you ready to come on back up here? Awesome. All right, so yes, I do want to say happy birthday to my grandmother. She's uh, 84 today. Um, yeah. And uh, so I, I decided I really have to tell this story. It's, um, I was helping my grandma clean out her big house. Uh, my grandpa passed away a few years ago back, and it was time. You know, she, she needed to move into a smaller place, and you know. So I'm in the attic and I'm going through things and I actually, well, I actually found this. Although on my grandma, this is like long sleeve, like super long sleeve because she is so short. She cannot ride most rides, like seriously. She is a teeny lady. Like my grandma, I mean, she is super short. She has fiery red hair. Um, she's extremely religious and she's full of anger. I love you, Granny, but you know, a little, a little mad. I don't know. Um, yeah, <laughs> if only, jeez. Uh, so, so I'm going through the stuff. I'm, I'm looking through boxes, and I, I find this photograph. And it, on the back it says, Velma Jean, 1950. My grandma's name is Velma Jean. Come on, that's so good, Velma Jean. On the front of it is a picture of her, and she's in, in like a bikini, it, 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 like kind of scantily clad, with lipstick on, I'm assuming it's, red, it's like dark, black and white, whatever. And she's got her hair done. She's like splayed on a rock, like sexily splayed in Spokane, Washington <laughs> in a field. Yo, what's up? Um, but the scandalous thing is, like, she's super Christian, you know? And because she's kind of tortured me, I love you, all my life, a little <laughs> bit with like being modest and being too loud and, you know, all these things, I seriously take every opportunity I can to tease her. So I was like, Grandma. Uh, grandma, 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 I found a naked picture of you. And she was like, like I could barely see her head above the boxes. She's like trying to look. And I showed her, I said, well, you're not naked, but you're in a bikini and you got a bang and bod. You look so good. And she's like, give me that. She held it close to her chest. She looked at it and she grabbed her cross with her other hand. She's like, I gave that to your grandpa when he was at the war. It is just what you did back then. And I was like, oh my God, grandma. <laughs> like, seriously. Oh, anyway, so I was like, oh, I, I love this. So essentially she sent my grandpa jerk off material. <laughs> so he wouldn't run away with like a Korean hooker or whatever. But apparently that's what you did back then even if you were a good Christian lady. I was like, grandma. So, Anyways, it inspired me to, I don't know, things inspire you to write a song <laughs> about the modern equivalent of sort of how you keep your loved one while they're overseas. You've been overseas for far too long. I want to give you more than just a song. So I sat down and made a list of all the things I bet you missed. And then I crossed them all off one by one. Nothing seems enough for all you done. I know how to heal the hurt. I put my camera phone beneath my skirt. <laughs> 
And I'm sending you my vagina on the phone <laughs> So even when you're not with me, you're not alone It's just my way of saying I love you, baby, and throwing you a bone I'm sending you my vagina on the phone Now my four lips are just for you and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm sending you a sweet surprise This care package between my thighs And I'm sending you my vagina on the phone And I'm hoping that you miss me too Like my lady parts I'm missing you And it's been so long I thought that maybe you'd like to have a picture of my beautiful lady yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sending you my vagina on the phone Cause even when you're not with me You don't have to feel alone it's just my way of saying I love you, baby. I hope this gives you wood. I'm sending you my vagina on the phone. I love you, Grandma. <laughs> Happy birthday. quality because I feel like dick pics like there's just so many of those out there like we need to start kind of evening it out right yes, yes. who's got a phone yes <laughs> thank you very <laughs> very uh, you know spirited back there um okay you guys we're gonna have hearing sound take the stage again so without further ado come on back y'all all right fellas let's go
tonight I would just like to say thank you to sisters and thank you to all you all for coming out here thank you to Jeff hearing sound Adam and Flynn and Margarita Carol and Vanya Arslanian thank you so much Micah Ed and Sean as always and um, oh E flat yeah so um, we are gonna be back April 26th we have Killy Mockstar Dwyer on it's going to be a fabulous show, and like always, you can always find us at MsStephanie'sHouse.com. So one thing I'm going to request, we're going to do a little improv outro here. If anybody has can, a word, just a word, we're going to go on one word. Anybody got a word? Shenanigans. That might be a little easier to put into a thing than that. <laughs> but we could try. Syllable. One syllable word. Fuck. Boom. Fuck. <laughs> Fox. What did you say? Fox. Fox. All right. <laughs> that was F-O-X, not F-U-X, right? Just kidding. No, I'm just joking. Um, because we want to say happy birthday again to your grandma, because I'm sure she's still hanging out. And we hope that we will see you again next month. So, all right, let's take it away. You crazy foxes back here. <laughs>
took it in And you opened the box and we were both surprised It was not a little tiny doll But it was a box now